Mike Dolly Tolleson, the defensive line coach at the University of Texas. And uh, excited about being here today. And I have with me Oscar Giles, a former player here at the University of Texas. Uh, great defensive end. He played for us here. Also played uh, several years in the National Football League with the Atlanta Falcons. And the first thing we're going to talk to you about today is, 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 is a stance. The thing that we really stress at, at the University of Texas with our front four is what we call BGO or ball get off. Okay? The first thing we have to establish at the line of scrimmage defensively is we, we, we want to attack and create a new line of, of defense uh, with our front four. And in order to do that, we have to achieve a proper stance. We use a three-point stance, but everything, and the reason we like that, we feel like we can adjust better out of the three-point stance, we have better ball get off out of the three-point stance. But all the fundamentals that we talk about here, with our stance, you could also do if you're a big four-point stance guy, that, that's, not, that's not a big deal, that's just what, what we believe in. The first thing that we like to do, if, as, as Oscar is demonstrating here, is we like to get our feet slightly short, about shoulder width apart, and we play a toe to end step. Okay, a stagger foot back. In, in this case, he's going to be in a right-handed stance, so we want our right foot back. We'll never go any further back than toe to heel because we feel like we'll overstep if we get too big a, too big a stagger. The second thing we do, once we achieve our toes straight up the football field, our heels are slightly out so that all of our power is right through our hips and over our knees, okay, for the proper, proper explosion and punch here. And now, in order to get the hand fixed properly on the ground, we go to elbows to our thigh bones. The thing that you got to remember now about a good stance is don't get into it in a hurry. Okay, we want to get a good functional stance here. The next thing we like to do is we'll take our right hand in this case and we'll throw it out in front of us, slightly in front of our eyes. Okay, that way it keeps you from having too much of a bunch stance. Okay, and a lot of guys, you know, they'll play where they got their, 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 their hips are down, their eyes are too far up. So the, obviously the first thing that's going to happen to them is they're going to, they're going to uh, play high. So we want the hands slightly out in front of the eyes, flats back, the hips are extended, the, the eyes are slightly up. Don't try to see too much of the guy in front of you. All you're focusing on is whatever your key may be, whether it be the football, the down hand, the near foot of the offensive lineman. That's all we're interested in right now. The next phase of our stance is, is all we talk about is making a weight change. It's making a weight change on our punch. So in this case, when he, whatever his tip may be, ball or whatever, the first thing he's going to do, the only thing he's going to do is take a, a, what we call a six inch power step, in this case with the right foot. So on movement here, if my foot is his key, and when I move my foot, boom, he takes, he takes a step and that's it. And every drill we do, we have something to focus on. I don't, we just don't say set, height, go. We've got something to look at. So that our defensive linemen always know that they have the primary key to tip their move. A lot of guys, coaches, you hear coaches talking about, son, your first step, your shoulders are coming up. The reason for that, just go ahead and make a, make a good long step here, Austin, hold it. If you overstride or overstep, that has a tendency to bring your shoulders up when you play high. Plus, you lose your base. So, again, all we're talking about here then is just a good six-inch power step and roll out of your stance, bump, and throw your hands, and so forth. And that's, that's, that, that's the reason we like this, this stance, and that's the reason we don't stagger any further than we do. If you have your feet, give me a deep stagger now, Oscar. If you have your foot back too far, and even though you're still trying to get a base, you're, you're having to come too far. And again, relax, relax, Oscar. That's good. Again, what we're talking about here now is run defense. Okay, now we'll, we'll change our stance a little bit, and you'll hear about that later on when we start rushing the passer. Talking about pass rush, we'll, we'll change our stance a little bit. But all we're doing right here now is we're just trying to get a nice functional stance where we can make a weight change. We're just trying to shift our weight through our hips and legs in order to punch and throw our hands and play from there. One more time, that's a good looking stance right there. And on movement, he'll take a nice, that's perfect, that's a good job. <laughs> is we have to be able to play out of both hands. We'll play right-handed stances. We'll also play left-handed stances. And if you'll just assume a left-handed stance for me there, Austin. Go ahead and sit. It's the same procedure. Everything's exactly the same. And as you see right here, he's got his left hand down now, but the operation is exactly the same as a right-handed stance. And he's always got his strike hand ready to strike. We don't want that hand up here. We've got to bring it so far. Okay, we want that hand where he can you can punch, and you're right there ready to go off and punch. And remember to throw your hands because 
That's going to play twofold for you. Throwing the hands is going to help keep your shoulders down. It's going to help get you momentum going on your punch. There it is right there. So we're getting ready to strike uh, out of our stance as we make our weight change. Now from here, what we'd like to do is take you over to our sled and show you our progression now, how we go now with, with the quick hands, and then we'll evolve into a power step, power reach step, and our escape as we go. Once we come out of our stance and start drill, uh, we go to what we call our quick hand session. All, right? All we're stressing here is how quick we'll get our hands on the opponent. And again, just like in a stance, Oscar, all his eyes are doing a riveting on my foot. Okay, and he's seeing how quick he come out. He, again, he's in a six-point position, head on the bag, because we're going to throw our eyes as well as our hands. And we're really stressed the lockout. And you see right here, Oscar's got his elbows locked as he punches. All right, extend one more time, Oscar. Now hold, stick. If he, if he winds up with his elbows flexed too much, that means the offensive guy is too close to him and is more than likely going to get a hold on him and can't get off the block. So we want to really stress lockout, hands in close, once we explode. Last one. Perfect. Outstanding. The next phase of our, our block protection segment, again, now we're back to our stance and we're, t we're teaching power, quick hands, one step. Again, now this time we'll use we'll use a different different key. I'm actually in the center. Again, as, as Oscar as Oscar steps right here, again, all he's thinking about is a weight change. One power step, quick hand. Back straight, eyes at the top of the bag. Now freeze right there. That's good. Now as you can see right here, this bag is locked down. It, it doesn't roll, it doesn't extend because what we're trying to get here again is off our, our weight shift. Our hands and power step, flat back, punch, eyes riveted. Again, everything is, is hands, hips, feet as we come out of our stance. One more time. Let's go, let's go left-handed stance this time. It's the exact same progression this time out of the left-handed stance. Again, his eyes are riveted on this key. One more time. That's good. Good. That's a good job right there. Okay, move to the eight. Go, go, go. All right, the next phase of our progression is, is again, stance, power step, quick hands, but now we're going to bring our up foot along with the power step, which we call our, our, our reed step. Get up just a little bit on the ball here. Okay, on, on this one, I like to go back to the foot so I can see the, the, the power step along with the reed step. See, good? That's good right there. See, again, now, now we're bringing the other foot with us. Right hand stance. Now the final phase of our, our uh, run block protection segment is the escape. And, and again, we our defensive line, we do these drills every day, okay? And we've already had the stance. We've had the quick hands, we had the power step, re-step. So from on this drill, we, we're already what we refer to as a perfect fit. Okay, in this case, Oscar is into the offensive lineman, and he's got in control. Now when we get off of him. All right, the things that we do, and Oscar will do this as we go, we're going to come off to escape off to our right in this case. Our right arm is going to be power arm, our right hips through, and then we're going to literally wheel off the back, okay? A common mistake that a lot of young defensive linemen make is they, as they try to escape, they try to rip, okay, or they try to swim. Those things are fine in pass rush. Show me a swim, Oscar. All right, as you can see, if you're trying to escape off of a run block, you're exposing your body too much with a swim. And if you try a rip, oh, right there. The good offensive lineman, all they'll do is clamp down and pull you down to the ground and you can't get off of them. So therefore, we call what we refer to as a wheel technique. It's like the wipe on, wipe off, if you will. A little martial arts involved. That's a good job, Oscar. One more time. And we'll work this drill right and left off of our escape so that we are literally clubbing the offensive man off of our body as, as we run to the football. Again, here, here he goes when he's ready because the key has already been established. The ball get off has already taken place. And from here, what we talk about, the ball's the issue. I'm off the guys trying to block me. Now I'm in hot pursuit of the guy carrying the football. And we're going to try to arrive there in a real bad disposition. Again, as we shed and release, Power arm, right arm, hip through, wheel, and go make a play. 
I'm Hardy McCreary, the defensive end coach at the University of Texas, and uh, Coach Tollison's done a great job showing you our run technique. I'm going to expand that into our pass rush technique. Also going to be using Oscar Giles, who you've already met, and we're also going to uh, get some good help out of Tom Herman, who played at Cal Lutheran and who is one of our offensive assistant coaches. Okay, as we approach the pass rush part of the segment here, there's three things today we want to emphasize. Coach Tollison has already talked about the stance. We'll come back and show you a slight adjustment when it is a pass rush situation. So we're here today to emphasize BGO or ball get off is the most important thing in pass rush at the University of Texas. The second thing is the use of hands, hand escape and hand placement. The third thing is body angle. So today in our drills and in our scheme, that's what we'll try and emphasize today on those three things. What we're going to talk about first is the stance. In a pass rush situation, we're going to use the basic stance that Coach Tollison already described and taught you, but we will make some slight adjustments on a rush call or in a long yarded situation. The number one thing is we tell the player to get comfortable in a stance where he can get his first two steps upfield as quick as possible off of total ball movement. We turn our eyes in slightly towards the football so that we've got a great view of the football because we want, when the football flinches, we have got to be a part of that. The second thing is we will allow the rusher to elongate his stance somewhat. You'll see his drop foot back here drop back a little bit so that he can lengthen his stride. His tail will also come up in the air slightly. In some cases, he might move his front hand a little bit further so that the stance is more elongated so that as soon as the football flinches or the offensive lineman flinches, we want to be upfield with two steps as quick as possible. At the University of Texas, we use a small ball that is brightly colored to reinforce the focus on the football. That's the number one and most important thing in pass rush is getting off on the ball. We call it BGO. The number one drill we start with every day and can't get enough reps onto this is our ball get off drill right here. We get in the pass rush stance right here. We're getting great ball movement and we're trying to get as low as we can through the shoots with a good base. You notice Oscar's tail's up in the air, he's got his foot back, and he's rolling off the ball. We emphasize totally look at the football in a pass rush situation. Okay, the next progression here is our hoop drills. And our hoop drills here, we're trying to emulate coming off the corner, learning to run with body lean, dipping that shoulder, and getting on the edge of a tackle and getting the feeling with both the right and left shoulder of coming off the edge and turning the corner at the quarterback. As we can see Tom there with his ball get off, emulating the edge, running the edge of the offensive lineman, turning the corner, and one of the most important parts is the finish right there for the sack of the quarterback. The second part of the progression here is for the rusher to get the sensation of leaning against the offensive tackle right here. So I will apply pressure as Oscar comes off the corner. Oscar, you can go on your own. So that he gets the sensation of the lean right there, of getting that shoulder down. Here we go, we've got Tom doing the same thing with the other shoulder tighten up to the hoop, getting that shoulder down, getting that shoulder down and finishing strong. The third progression here is the cat and the rat where we're in a chase situation where we're still running the hooks and then we change directions and the chase goes on and we're learning to run the hoops dipping that shoulder. All right, what, what we're emulating here in, in the last pass rush drill is the use of hands. We're going to try and slap the offensive tackle's hand down, get our hips through, and push off with the other hand, and then square back up and go to the next man. 
in our, in our pop-up drill. Notice Oscar is getting his hips through, leading with his lead hand, and making his backhand work. Notice it starts with the good ball get off, getting your hips through, lead with the front hand, and make the backhand work. All right, nice job. A little bit tighter with the backhand. Get your hips through. There we go. The, the most important part of this drill right here is beat the set. It's just beating the offensive lineman out of his stance, getting a great twitch off the football right here. You see Oscar in his pass rush stance right here with his butt up in the air, turning the corner and exaggerating the rip technique. This, like all of our drills, we're working in a right and a left-handed stance with the offensive tackle just trying to beat us to the set. We're trying to beat him off the ball and out of his stance. Close with the rip to the quarterback. Great ball get off. We beat the corner right there, and then we turn and cover up for a play down field with a big man hit. Hey, loose with that. Go, go, go. All right, we're looking for the overset by the tackle, and here's where we counter and come inside close to the quarterback, and then we try and cover up downfield. Now we're going to take you inside and show you some pass rush games on our chalk talk. At the University of Texas, uh, Coach Thomas and I uh, and Coach Reese, our defense coordinator, we believe in using games up front really for two reasons. One, to take advantage of pass protections, different protections, and secondly, to disrupt the draw game. But one of the most important components of pass rush is we must maintain lane integrity. As we have here on the diagram, this would be a base pass rush lane integrity where the two ends are responsible for contain. They've got to stay on the upfield or outside shoulder of the quarterback threat. The two inside rushers have got to be your A, B gap rushers. They must be in the face of the quarterback and be in the inside draw lanes. Therefore, when you run these pass rush games, you must switch these responsibilities. The tackles have to take the ends' responsibilities. The ends have to take the tackles' responsibilities and still maintain the four rush lanes that are required to be successful in rushing the passer and stopping the draw game. Our first game is a, is a tech stunt. And the tech stunt, you know, quite commonsensically, is the, the tackle will go first in a tech stunt. Once again, the tackle is going to rely on great ball get off. He's coming off the line, takes a short jab step, to, to make him believe he's an upfield rusher, and then he is going to push towards the face of the tackle. He cannot be, be uh, pinned by the tackle because now he's becoming the contained rusher. He and the end basically are trading lane responsibilities. Now the end's job is to start upfield to draw the tackle's block, and now as he, as he starts upfield and the tackle clears, he's coming off the tail of the tackle, reading the set of the guard. If the guard's eyes come on him, he's coming inside into the A lane. If the guard's butt goes down, he's now coming off the tail of the butt, and he is the A, B gap rusher. So now we have simply changed rush responsibilities but tried to disrupt the pass protection. On our head now, the end is going first. The end will, will start with a 45-degree step upfield, once again reading the tackle, and he's coming down inside to be the A-B gap rusher. Now the tackle's job is as the ends was, he must get up in the line and draw the block but not be pinned and now come off the rear end of the end and now he's also pushing from contain right here. Once again, take advantage of pass protection and secondly, disruption of the draw so they're both good second and third long down calls. Okay, our combination package rushes are called mixes. And on a mix it now, we'll get a four man game going as opposed to the two man game going. This is once again a great third down call, second down long yardage call, and once again great for the screens and the draws trying to turn our defensive line loose. So on a mix it, we will run a tech on the strong side with the three technique pushing for contain, the end upfield trying to draw the tackles block coming underneath the guard. 
On the split end side, now we, we will run an exit where the end now goes first, reading the guard, guard's eyes come on him, he comes underneath, guard's rear goes down, he comes off the tail. The tackle pushes up field trying to draw the guard block, comes off the end's rear and pushes for contain. As you can see, gives pass protection problems and definitely uh, can deter the draw blocking schemes that we see both in, in all levels of football. That would be a mix it for us. So you've seen two two-man games and now one four-man game that we use extensively here at the University of Texas. All right, tying, tying everything together now, we were talking about out on the field as far as base technique, uh, uh, proper stance, and so on. We're going to get right into the meat and potatoes now about what we do against the run defensively. Our philosophy at the University of Texas is we like to feature a front that, that is an odd or a bubble look, the old 50 front, if you will, to one side with a split look or an even look uh, to the other side. Okay, so that you've always got a five technique or a three technique, depending on which way you want to go with the front. And in order to do that, so that we're not always dictating, <clears throat> that offenses are not always dictating to us it's that they know where we're going to be, where we're going to be setting and try to attack that particular look, STEM is big in our package, okay, as far as run, the run scheme is concerned. So in other words, we may show an even look to one side, in this case to the call side, and just like most defenses, we call the tight end or two receiver side of the street most of the time in, in rundown situations. And the side away from the call, for example, this could be a left, the side opposite the call then uh, uh, would be the bubble look, the side to the call and the split. So you got a three technique, five technique. If we want it just reversed, okay, we want to show split odd, and then we slide the front prior to snap. Now, <clears throat> we don't have a trigger term where the linebacker says move or anything like that. We all, we've always found that, that a de one of the defensive linemen has a little better feel than another possibly. Now, you, again, that's the way we do it. So when one of the kids has the feel that it, it's time to slide, he kind of pulls everybody with him. So going back up here, for example, the three technique moves inside. Uh, shade, the inside shade kicks out to the three. Uh, the five technique loosens up. The, the nine techniques come, that comes down to five. So this, this front on, on stem becomes this front, okay? Now we want to show you three different pass rush moves. These three moves are based on reading the set of the offensive lineman. The whole basis, as we talked about outside, is threatening the man with BGO, with speed on the outside, but also reading the set of the offensive lineman while not slowing down, using his body weight against him. The first one, the first one deals with a set, an inside set by an offensive lineman, where he is going to set heavy inside, protect inside. And I'm reading that he is on the inside of my number. So as I threaten upfield and he sits and I notice that he's sitting inside, I want to reach for that hand as we did outside and as we talked about hand movement. Pull that shoulder down, look for the soft shoulder, and now get my feet and shoulders past the blocker and accelerate to the quarterback. If he goes to overset on me to prevent my speed from the outside, then we come with a counter rip. On the counter rip, one of the true coaching points is we must threaten him upfield enough to get his body and hips open. And now, grabbing with a hand with our explosive power, using his body weight against him, rip and come open and finish the sack. The third and final technique is the bull rush which involves a butt and separate technique. Once again, when the offensive lineman is trying to deep set us, we're going to use his body weight against him to sack the quarterback or apply pressure. So I come off the football with my great BGO. I'm threatening with speed, but when I recognize that the offensive lineman is giving me a deep set, I'm now going to turn into him, explode with my face and hands off the lead foot, play with leverage, and drive him and his body weight into the quarterback, producing the sack or the pressure from a collapsed pocket. I want to emphasize once again that we only use three pass rush techniques at the University of Texas. 
The first one, number one, and no question, is BGO is built on speed. Coming off the corner. We're going to create coming off the corner. Then if they use their body weight to try and stop that, we're going to counter and come underneath. And third, if they deep set on us and try and take away our speed rush, we'll turn it into a physical game and go with the bull rush. 